Thank you for having me again. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about <clears throat> first base play today. I think this is probably the most neglected area in a clinic session. Most infield guys are usually were middle infielders, and they spend a lot of time with double play turns, pivots, feeds, maybe some third base work, fielding bunts, blah, blah, blah. But first base play is really neglected. It's usually you put the guy over there that can catch the ball, make sure he puts his foot on the white thing, and catch it. There's a lot more to it. And there's a lot more to it that will make it a lot easier for your first baseman to excel. <clears throat> now, a big part of this is positioning. And I have a formula I go by, but the stage is not big enough. So I'm going to kind of run through it in explanation, and then I'm going to try to get Dirk to find me a larger room. And then those of you who are interested, I can show you the formula to find straight up for a left-hander, straight up for a right-hander. How the first baseman plays way off the line on those big right-handed hitters, but still can get to the base comfortably if there's a one-hop ground ball hit hard to the third baseman. This is very important. Uh, you go to a lot of uh, games at the lower levels and you see the first baseman play the same spot for a left-handed hitter and a right-handed hitter. Aggravates me. <clears throat> if you stop and think, most of your pitches are either in or low and away. If you're a right-handed hitter and you're being pitched low and away, your bat arc to get to that ball very seldom allows you to hit a ground ball toward the right field line. It happens, but it happens on balls that are up. It's usually a bad pitch. Up and away is not a very good pitch. You can't defend every bad pitch. But if you think about it, a ball that's low and away to a right-handed hitter, when he makes contact, his bat is in that arc. Spray charts always should show the right-handed hitters a lot of ground balls from the second baseman over and a lot of fly balls to right field because if you pitch them low and away, that's where they hit the ball in the air. Left-handers is just the opposite. If you pitch them low and away, there's a lot of fly balls to left center, left field, center field, left field because their bad arc, that's where, it, that's where it takes it. So a first baseman should not play in the same spot for a left-handed hitter and a right-handed hitter. I have a formula for this. And you can count the steps, and then from where you are, you can count the steps to first base, and they're going to be the same. Although this left-hand hitter is playing way back on a Barry Bonds, so he doesn't get his lips torn off, but yet he can play way over here on a Mike Trout, Ah, thank you. On a Mike Trout and still be the same distance he is where Barry Bonds is and get to the base in case there's a one hopper to third base. So this is very interesting. And once you count the steps and show the difference, then you've got your first baseman to go, okay, I can get there. But most kids, when you tell them to get off the line, they're thinking, how in the world am I going to get over there? Well, there's a formula and steps added to it. If we can get a bigger room, we'll all cram over there. Everybody that's interested, and I'll walk it off, and I show, I'll show you. All right? And, it's, and then what I do, even at the major league level, is I'll go out, and at home, I, I, I mark them with things in the stands. Left-handed hitter comes up. I'm even with section 221. And over here, that's the aisle right here, the aisle, first aisle going up. I'll mark it. So if they ever get confused, or they might, whew, I've got something to look at. There's a Coca-Cola advertising sign and the fourth aisle over. And that way it's their security blanket. I know where I'm supposed to be. I know I can get there. So you can use those type of things also. Okay, so we're going to do that. We'll go find a room somewhere, and we'll walk off those steps, those of you that are interested. It really makes your first baseman breathe. And take a sigh. Okay, if I use that one, I'm going to fall on my face. All right, now, let's talk about once the ball is hit. The first baseman. How does he get there? I try to use the same language throughout my teaching. 
Yesterday, those of you were here and we talked about the six F's of fielding. And I talked about the, fir- uh, the footwork. I used the word replace your feet. So I'm going to use the same language in everything I teach so I don't confuse the player. <clears throat> when the ball is hit, as the first baseman, I see the ball hit. I'm going to run to the corner that's closest to me. Don't worry about it. The left foot's going to get there first every time. Don't worry about it. Tell him to get to the base and hit it with your left foot. It'll happen every time. Once I hit that base with my left foot, I'm going to replace it with my right. So this is my setup. Now, the first thing that some of us are thinking about right now is, if there's a ground ball to third, why would I want to be on this corner back here? Okay, let's just change the angle a little bit. You can't see that base, can you? I'll make it work. Why would I want to be on this corner? You anchor at the corner farthest from your glove. Think about it this way. What is the toughest throw for a right-handed first baseman to catch? This one. Because my glove's over here. It's got to go across my body. If I anchor at this corner, I can go all the way. All I have to do now is go to the ball. And I got this throw. Easy. If it goes to this side of my body, my glove's over here. I got this one without even moving my feet. And then if I even want, if I can slide it, I even got this one. So I have a range of this. And fellas, if my infielders can't throw it in that range, we got problems anyway. <laughs> Those that go to this front corner because it's hit the third base, it's fine if you can guarantee me the third baseman is going to throw it there every time. What if he throws it over there? Look at the range I've lost. That ball, I'm chasing that ball. Now there's a runner on third instead of first. So you anchor, once you get to the base, you anchor at the corner farthest from your glove. If you're a left-handed first baseman, you don't have to worry about getting to the base and replacing your feet. I'm not going to run to do this or I'll fall on my face. The the right-handed first baseman hits it with his left, replaces it with his right, and it squares him up to the whole field. Left-hander doesn't have to do that. He goes goes to that right, he goes right to that corner. Now, what is the toughest throw for a left-handed first baseman to catch? This one, up the line, because his glove is over here. Well, now he's taking all the guesswork out of that. Now it's easy. I don't have to do anything with my feet. I just go to the ball. I've got that one. Over here, here's my glove. I got this one. If I need to slide, I can slide. Now think about it this way, too. If I'm a right-handed first baseman, and I go to this corner, and I'm going to slide my foot over there, that's pretty. That's hard to do. That's real hard to do. But I'm going to anchor at the corner farthest from my glove. The glove's going to help me on this side. That's the one I'm concerned about. As a right-handed first baseman, this is the one I'm concerned about. The glove's going to help me over here. And then you slide. So once again, anchor at the corner, farthest from your glove. I'm not a big proponent of straddling the base and then finding the ball, finding the glove. Two reasons. It's guesswork, in my opinion. And the other one is I put my Achilles and my heel sometimes right in the middle of that base. And you can get stepped on and get hurt. I'm going to make contact with the base. I know where the base is. So the ball of my foot is up against the base. When you get advanced, once that throw comes to you, you can just turn your foot too and go get it. And now you give the runner the whole base. Let him have it. I'm up against the base. So once you see it, you can just slide your foot when you get a little bit more advanced. Okay? Anchor at the corner farthest from your glove. Okay, now let's talk about holding a runner on. It's changed because at my level because of instant replay. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. 
But let's talk about how it used to be and probably how it is at the lower levels and as kids are growing up. How to hold a runner on first. Okay? So we'll make this home plate. This is the pitcher. The first thing, I'll do a right-hander first. The first thing is make sure your toes are in front of the base, not back on the base. Your toes are in front of the base. Now, as a right-handed first baseman, my foot, in my opinion, cannot be down the line. I can't hold a runner on like this. For the same reason as I anchor at the corner farthest from my ball, from my glove. Nine out of ten pickoff throws are going to go where? To the back side of the base. How am I holding this guy on? Where's my glove? A long way from the back side of the base. As a right-handed first baseman, take your right foot, get it off the line and toward the mound somewhere. Somewhere toward the mound. Here's the rubber. Here's the front of the, the mound where the dirt and grass meet. Here's the rubber. Somewhere in that area. Make sure it's open. It cannot be closed. If it's closed and the pitcher throws it over here, you're locked. You're locked. You can't get it. It's done. You're chasing it. If it's open, you got a shot to drop, step, and catch it. The reason you want your toes in front of the base, change the angle a little bit, is so you can, when you make your tag, you tag in front of the base. If you're back, if, he doesn't, if you don't think it makes a difference, and you, and you, t and you uh, have your foot on the, uh, even with the base, you're going to tag the base. If your toes are in front, you tag in front. Very simple. All your toes have to be in the front. And for the guys that don't know how to come back to first base, you actually block the front corner. So you'll know where to tag. Go right to the back corner. Now, for a lefty, doesn't matter. Doesn't make that big of a difference. He can have his foot down the line if he wants. Why? Because his glove is over here. Position's made for a lefty. So he's got a free reign. So he can have his feet wherever he wants. If he wants to get it off the line, fine. If he wants to keep it on the line, fine. He's got the ability with his glove here to tag in the front. <clears throat> Okay, now, sometimes you have those runners <coughs> that can't run, and you have that big left-handed hitter up, but you just can't give them the base, because if you give them the base, they'll run. So sometimes you'll just play off the base to begin with, and then kind of turn your hips toward the pitcher just in case they throw over. Now, if you do it this way, what you do is you give your first baseman a head start on guarding himself with that big left-handed hitter up. Because you're really not worried about this guy running. But if you do that and you do throw over, remember, and I've seen this called at the major league level, if you throw over, the first baseman just can't do that and throw it back to the pitcher. You have to at least take that little jab step like you're going to make a tag. Otherwise, it's a balk because you're throwing to an unoccupied, unoccupied base is what they're going to tell you. So if you're playing off the line, fine. But they do throw over, you have to at least give it that kind of thing. Now, I would mention instant replay a few minutes ago. If you watch a big league game, probably 90% of all left-handed first basemen are now not holding the runner on the old conventional way. They're all off the line up here. Number one, they're getting a head start on getting off the base. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But the other thing is... Now if they get the ball quicker and maybe they tag him on the back or on his feet when they go back, before he gets to the base instant replay, we'll, we'll confirm that. Back in the day, the theory was tag straight hard, straight down, straight up, hard as you can. Make a sound and fool the umpire. You know, try to make a sound when you make a tag. Straight down, straight up. That doesn't work with instant replay. Instant replay, the advantage is now, especially those lefties, you can tag the guy as he goes by. Anthony Rizzo is probably the best I've seen at this. He's really good. He knows the guys that when they dive back, their feet are in the air. 
And you can see him actually just reach for the feet, trying to touch them on the heel before their hand gets back to the base. So how you hold a runner on, especially being left-handed, has changed in the last few years because of instant replay. Okay, let's talk about coming off the base. The pitcher, the pitcher is actually going to pitch the ball. We're all set up now for if he throws over. Now we're holding him on. I'll be a right-handed first baseman first. Does it matter which foot goes first? Once I see the ball delivered to home plate, does it matter if I go left or if I go right? It matters. Once again, I talked about last night in the footwork part of the six Fs about gaining distance and direction at the same time. So once again, we use the same language in everything we teach to not confuse the player. It's not like it's okay for this, but it's not okay for that. It has to be the same and the same language. So it does matter because I'm looking for distance and direction as quick as possible. If I hold this runner on and my first step is with my left foot, how far did I go? Not very far. And where am I facing? Second base. Where's the ball? Home plate. I have no distance and I have no direction. So leading with your left foot is wrong. Obviously, it's going to be your right. If I lead with my right, not only do I get distance, but now I have direction at the same time. Now I take a secondary lead like I'm a base runner, and I'm off the base. So it's lead right, replace your feet. Lead right, replace your feet. Now I'm ready. For the lefty, he's left-handed. Lead left? Nope. Lead right. Distance and direction. Replace your feet. You're off. It's not how far you get off. It's that you're comfortably on the balls of your feet when the, hitting, when the ball's in the hitting zone. Your Don Mattingly is going to get off a lot farther than Justin Bohr. Body types. It's just the way it is. So as far off as you can get and be on the balls of your feet and be ready when the ball's in the hitting zone, that's what you want. It's going to be different for every player. Don't expect one guy to get out here and expect everybody to get out here. It's not going to happen. Now you have a catcher that can throw. How do I get back? I coached 13 years in Texas, and Pudge Rodriguez was the catcher. The first baseman better get back because he's throwing. So the best way to do this one is when you're holding a runner on, you lead right, you replace your feet. Now, how in the world am I going to get way back there with Pudge throwing? When the pitch clears the hitting zone, I replace my feet back. Now, if Pudge throws the ball from my right shoulder toward the baseline, all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop step with my glove side foot. I'm going to drop step, catch the ball, and look right and tag. I block the front corner automatically, and it allows me to get to that back corner. Now, you see the first baseman do this all the time. What if the ball's thrown back here? We talked to you yesterday. Once again, deliver the same consistent message. If you want to be square, you got to be square. If you want to be square on the ground ball, you got to be square on the ground ball. Cut off on a relay. Until the guy throws the ball, don't you want to be square? When you're taking your lead, your secondary lead, don't you want to be square? All of a sudden, it's okay not to be square? That's where I get confused with coaches. We deliver mixed messages. If I want to be, if square is so good, why don't I want to be square all the time? Why does it matter to turn my body? Let my lower half turn my upper half. We talked about that last night. Tony talked about it as a catcher's. My lower half controls my upper half. So I'm way out here. The ball clears the hitting zone. When I, when I replace my feet back, all I have to do is, I don't have to guess. I have my imaginary line. 
If the ball's thrown over here, I go catch it. Give it back to the pitcher. If I think the ball is going to be past the baseline, I go catch it. But if that ball is from my right shoulder to the baseline, as I drop step, as I catch it, I've blocked that front corner, and I can get to that back corner real easy. All right, what about the lefty? You're holding the runner on, deliver the pitch, lead right, replace your feet. Pitch is done, replace your feet. How in the world am I going to get back there? Yikes. Okay, same thing. Same thing. If that ball is from my right shoulder to the line, all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop step with my glove side leg. If I do that, what have I done? I've blocked the front corner, and look where it takes me, right to the back corner. And yet I remain square the whole time, protecting myself against bad throws, watching my buddy's back. Giving him the confidence, throw it down here. If it's a good throw, I'll tag him for you. If it's not, I'll keep it in the infield. Don't be timid and worry about me. Let her fly. I got you. Kind of like Tony was talking about blocking balls. I'm going to block every one of them. Throw it. If you want to throw it, throw it. I got you covered. <clears throat> so, once again, once you replace your feet back, you drop, drop step with your glove side foot. That blocks the front corner and enables you to tag the back corner comfortably without reaching, jumping, diving. And the same thing with the left-hander. Drop step. You block the front corner, and you're easily there to tag the back corner. Okay, let's talk about, now this one is ignored a lot. You got a left-handed pitcher. The runner goes first move. As soon as he picks it up, it's hard to say steal a, ball, steal a base off a left hand. Read his move and then run. No, 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 That's, that doesn't happen. If you're going to run off a lefty, it's usually when he picks his leg up, you're gone. You're guessing. Maybe you see something in the way he holds. Maybe his glove is flat when he throws home and it's down when he throws to first or something. That Maybe you can get a key like that. But more often than not, when you're stealing off a left-handed pitcher, once he picks that leg up, for your first move, you're gone. Okay, what do we do as first baseman to get an advantage? Because he's taken off and the ball's still in the pitcher's hand. If I go in first move, he's gone right now. He's gone. The ball has to go to first base. He's got to get it and throw it to the shortstop or second baseman, whoever's covering the, over there. Okay, here's the footwork. Right-handed first baseman first. You're holding him on the conventional way. Toes are in the front. Okay, now, as soon as he picks his leg up, peripheral vision, I know he's gone. He's gone. So as soon as I see that, I square up. Once again, we're talking the same language. Square up. He still has the ball in his hand. Now, how do I know where he's going to throw it? I don't know, and I don't care, because I'm square. If he throws the ball, once again, I'm going to draw that line. If he throws that ball from my left shoulder out, I'm going to just go like I'm stretching to catch a throw. I'm going to go to the ball. Here's one step. I'm going to, I'm going to funnel this ball back to my body. I'm going to try to catch it deep to begin with, but I'm going to get it back to my middle of the body, and then I'm going to replace my feet. And look how far I've gone in a step and a half. I'm not counting this step. He still has the ball in his hand. He's just now starting to throw it. I'm five foot nine, and I traveled that far in a step and a half. The other thing is, here's the baseline. I'm that far inside the baseline. He's not in my line of throws now. If he is, if he wants to bow out that far, I'm going to hit him right in the back. He's out. Because most base runners, when they know they're out, their first move, and they see that ball bond, they will bow toward the baseline a little bit, but they're not going to be able to get that far. So you've already created a clear lane to throw. 
So once again, you're holding him on. He picks his leg up. You see him going. You square up, and now you go to the ball, wherever the ball is. Go to it like you're stretching for a regular throw. Replace your feet. That takes you right where you want to go. Takes you right to second base. Throw the ball. Let the middle guys make the tag. For a lefty, it's basically the same. It's just the other foot. You're holding him on. You see him go. You square up. Here comes the throw. Now it's from this shoulder out. If it's over here, you catch. make sure you catch the ball. I'd rather a guy be safe at second than safe at third. If I get that throw, I go to the, my, the ball with my right foot. Replace my feet. Takes me right where I want to go. <clears throat> so the key is once you see the runner break, and you'll see it, peripheral vision. Once you see him break... That's when you square up. Pitcher still has the ball. Now you react where he throws the ball. Go to the ball just like you're receiving a throw. Replace your feet and give it to the middle guy. Let him make the tag. Okay, now, what about the runner that does this? He knows he's picked off, so he takes those steps and just stops. You have to trust me on this one. I've watched thousands of rundowns on film. Trust me on this one. Trust me, every runner, every runner, and I don't have a reason, but I've watched it and I've counted. When runners are picked off by a lefty and they know they're out, they run four steps and stop. I've watched it. They'll go, oh, let's see. Every time. Four, they'll stop at the fourth step every time. Every time. Well, where do you think the ball is in the first baseman's hands after the fourth step? I've watched this one too, and I've done it. After the fourth step, this is where the ball is on the first baseman. Right here, the perfect throwing position. He stops, now what do I do? Now I start running at him. Run down. Every single time. So don't worry about the guy that's going to stop on you. He's going to stop right when you're in the perfect throwing position. Thumbs down, elbow up, a short arm. Same thing we talked about last night. You're going to, he's going to stop right there on the fourth step. Before you throw the ball, you go get him. Every time. Every time. <coughs> so just do your thing. Just let it happen automatically. Okay, now let's talk about balls that are low, low throws. How are we going to pick those? All right, we've gone to the we talk, same thing now. We talked about anchoring at the corner, farthest from our glove. The easiest way to teach this is get your first baseman where you want him and then take a chalk line or a fungo, turn it over and draw a line. Put some sort of line on the field where his left foot is, draw it straight out. Okay? Every throw, whether it's in the air or a bad throw in the dirt, every throw from that line out, there's where the outfield is, from that line out is an automatic backhand. Automatic. So if I catch the throw here, it's here. If it's balls in the dirt, it's here. You see a lot of first basemen, that ball right at them, they want to forehand that ball. Here's the reason why it's a backhand. If I forehand that ball, here's where I am. I'm locked. I'm not going to move this foot. I'm not going to cheat. Watch what happens when I use the backhand. About 8 to 12 more inches reach. I get more extension. I get more reach. So I'm going to draw that line out. I'm going to start off by just like I did last night, talked about how I do early work with infielders, the second baseman, short stops, and first baseman. How I roll the ball. I'm going to roll the ball. And I'm going to let them see that this is a backhand. This is a backhand. All these are backhands. The only forehand is when I have to go outside my, outside my leg. This is a forehand. 
You got the guys that do this, the ball's right at them. One of these, that's luck, pure luck. There I'm looking at the ball, where's my glove? It's behind me. If you were at the six Fs last night, to be a good, consistent infielder, what two things do you have to see at the same time? The ball and the glove, that's luck. <laughs> it's luck. You may, get, you may get lucky, good, but it's luck. The ideal way is obviously I see it, I kind of shift, and I try to catch that ball like this. But that ball right at me is a backhand. These are all backhands. Okay, for the lefty, just the opposite. He's as anchoring at this corner, so you draw the line where his right foot is. Those are all backhands to him for the same reason. More extension, more reach. If it's past that right foot, on the infield side, they're all backhands. Infield, in. And if it's outside that foot, that becomes the forehand. And you can reach, you can get all those and see the ball and the glove at the same time. <clears throat> okay, we're good? All right. One last thing. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're getting close. <clears throat> I talked about receiving with the ball, with the uh, corner farthest from your glove. <clears throat> Once I do that, I'll turn it this way on this one. Once I get to this position, I'm square to every position on the field. Third, short, and second base when he's playing straight up. I can go right to every one of those guys. I don't have to do anything. There's one exception to this rule. One exception. When I get to the base, remember when I know if this ball's hit to the second baseman, shortstop or third baseman, I'm going to go hit it left, replace right, and I'm square to everybody. The exception to the rule is... If the second baseman breaks to his left to catch the ball, if he has to go to his left, if I do the same approach, left, replace, he goes to his left, I have to move my feet almost two times to get to him. You heard me last night talk about less movement, less chance of error. Keep it simple. Cut out unnecessary movements. Those are unnecessary movements. So when I'm playing first base, and I know my second baseman has to go to his, to his left to catch the ball, I'm not going to hit it with my left foot anymore. I'm going to hit it with my right foot. If I know he's going to his left, if I hit it with my right foot, where am I automatically? It's my best side, by the way. I'm square to him automatically. So I've made it easier. And the only thing I did is I changed my fundamental or my technique. Now I'm square to him without doing any extra movements. You know, those of you that are old enough to know the Three Stooges, you know, Curly used to go, Woo. it's like the Curly move, trying to get turned around, right? If the second baseman goes to his left, I don't hit it with my left foot and replace it with my right. I hit it with my right, and I'm square. And I got him covered. The one exception to the rule. Hit it with your right, and the second baseman goes left. Okay. Uh, the ones that want to know, see the, um, the markings, how to do it. Dirk, is there a room, is there a room somewhere we can go? Is that open? <clears throat> okay. Those of you that are interested in those steps and how that works, I'll go over there in just a few minutes, and we'll, we'll mark that off. And, it's, and it's, if you have a, a lot of guys in your league that you like to play off the line, it's worth showing your first baseman so they can breathe and <clears throat> say, I know I can get there now. So I'll give you that formula over there. Okay? Thanks, guys.